Hey everyone, today it's the session number 11 of the Let's Build. And today we're going to make a, kind of an escape room, uh, like something that uh, Indiana Jones inspired. Uh, so a room that when the, the player enters the room, uh, then the wall starts um, uh, kind of crushing the player. They are moving in the center of the room and you have to activate some levers to open a door. Um, so first we're going to just make the kind of the environment. Um, maybe we can, let's start with the terrain. So right now I'm, it's the default floor. I'm just going to generate uh, a new terrain with some, um, um, let's use the background mountains. All right. Okay, so let's move that down. All right, so here we have the spawn point and the terrain. All right, so this is our terrain. I'm just going to uh, make the environment. So first, just going to use the paint to have this uh, paint on the ground. Um, and we're going to place a lot of foliage. Um, so some, some trees um, on the ground. Let's use uh, yeah maybe these ones. There is a lot of there are a lot of trees right now. Maybe we can just increase the dist distance between them. All right, maybe a bit less. All right, so let's start with that, and we will have our temple right here. So um, I'm going to enable the collision with the trees, and now. All right, so now we have some trees here. Um, so something we can do with terrain is to use the um, um, erase foliage here. So this tool allows you to erase uh, foliage. So uh, you see that when I click, uh, now it's kind of erasing the, the trees. So now I can have uh, an area with uh, like all the trees uh, that are not here. So yeah, maybe I can increase a bit the size of that. All right. And let's place the spawn point right here. And the rotation of the player like this. All right, so now the player spawns uh, next to those uh, trees. So we can't really see them now because I'm in low quality. Uh, but yeah, you, we have some trees right here. So let's make the... Um, um, yeah, maybe this can be just a room right now. So... Um, maybe we can start with that kind of pyramid. I'm going to increase the size of that. And I'm going to place the room at the at the top of that. Like this. And um, yeah, something like that. Uh, and maybe we can add some stairs to go at the top of that. All right, let's increase the size. All right, so uh, this will do the job. Um, let's move a bit like that so that the stairs are not, yeah. Like that seems great to me. And then we can change the the material to have something with some bricks. Yeah, let's let's use that one. And bricks too for the stairs. All right. Um, yeah, we can also use the brick for the um, between each uh, 
step and let's make that a bit darker so that so this is the texture of what's uh, under the each stairs all right so now i should be able to walk here and to reach the center of the pyramid all right so now i'm here and this will be the kind of the puzzle um, i'm going to to make so uh, let's select those two Control g this is the pyramid and then i'm going to make the room at the top so let's show the so the white box uh it's um some uh, so this is great white box your your level so right now this is what i'm going to use we have a wall here um, and we have a door basic here with the wall um, that is what we need um, so i'm going to uh, right now because my pyramid is a bit on the on the side um, first you see that here the texture is aligned so if i want to remove that i can uncheck the use smart material and i'm just going to increase the u and v tiling all right so now it's it's better because you see that everything is uh, aligned with the with the pyramid and here i'm going to um, let's place um just uh, the first wall right here um and i'm going to move it inside uh yeah let's make a new group because right now so this is uh you see that it's oriented with a 70 degrees so that will be a bit difficult to uh to handle because everything will be a bit rotated so i could either just rotate the the pyramid to be aligned or i can also make a new group that's the the room and then uh so that room we're going to move that one here so in the in the middle of of the pyramid okay so this is what is rotated so i want that to be zero and then i will rotate okay so now you see that everything is rotated so zero for the pyramid zero for that so now we don't really need uh, all that minus 90 all right and i'm just going to move the spawn point there so that it's easier for us to to just try the game all right and and now i want the door so you see that it's a door that um, just open when I, I walk through the like when I walk next to the door uh, it just opens mm, at least it, it opens once uh, maybe there is an issue with this door well let's just use the, the basic wall right now we're going to place the door after um, so now we can align the wall that's way easier let's move that here so if you want to place your object with the um, with the on the grid you can press g to enable the translation snap and here you have the the unit so now you see that if i duplicate that value you see that now well let's pick 200 you see that now the there is a grid so now the the x value is growing uh, by 20 uh, like 200 um, and that way it's a bit easier to align everything so let's do something like that and rotate that object 
All right, so it's not a not a perfect square, but this will be enough for us right here. Uh, maybe here I can disable the grid to align that, and here too. But yeah, here we we need a door, so I'm just going to place uh, that kind of white box door here. And I'm going to change the size of the walls to be next to the door. All right. Okay, and then we can maybe duplicate that one. So that's the base. This is the stairs. We have the room and then we have the kind of the roof of the of the room. All right, and you see that the scale here of the, the two textures are not the same, so we are still doing the same. We're going to change the uh, V tiling. So here the scale was uh, 50, and here the scale is 16. So I think if we set that to uh, maybe two, yeah, we get something uh, quite similar, maybe a bit too small uh, yeah let's use 1.6 yeah maybe that's a bit better and let's just use a pyramid like that all right so <laughs> this is the the environment we're going to to work with um, and i'm not going to spend more time on that just uh, selecting all the walls and changing the texture bricks recall sandstone so this is the inner so on the inside and then i also want the all right so now we we have the room we have something great um and mm, all right, so maybe the first thing you can do is that when the player enters the room, then the something is just uh, closing the door so we can have uh, like a wall right here. Uh, like we can play uh, SFX and, and like something is growing from the ground and, and doing something like that. Uh, I think we, we are going to start with that. This is uh, a great, great first step for for our script. <clears throat> All right, so we are going to keep that here, uh, like that. So right here, and then I'm going to move it. Uh, you see that because of the smart material, when uh, when I'm moving the object, like just the bricks are uh, kind of sliding on the object. So as always, I'm just going to remove the smart material. And now it's a bit tricky because we have to kind of find a way to um, have the same size of bricks. All right. So when it's up, yeah, it's almost that. Uh, but that, that will be enough uh, right now. OK, so let's grab all the walls and move them in the room so now i have the base the stairs the room and the the roof or like the the top of the pyramid and this is our door that we want to move so uh, to detect if to detect if the player is inside the the room uh, we need the trigger so i'm going to make a new gameplay object trigger and I'm going to place that object right here. Um, or maybe we can do that right there so that when the player... Um, how do we want to make that? 
I think like in all those kind of movies, we want something in the middle, like a, a table, uh, or maybe just a, let's just place a square right now, a uh, box, cube, yeah, that's cube. Uh, let's place a cube in the, in the center. And this will be kind of the yeah the centerpiece of the of that uh, system, and then uh, let's place some wood planks. All right. Um, so when the player approach that table, I want the door to uh, close. So let's place that trigger around the table. All right. So now I have the, the trigger here and um, we're going to make a new script. So this is the table. We're going to make a new script. Um, that's the door, door manager, door, door controller. And I'm going to move that as a child of the trigger. Um, so that script uh, it's going to detect when the, the player enters the trigger. So, as always, we're going to use the script generator. Click on the trigger overlap, copy, and then we can paste that here. Um, I'm just going to set that to trigger. We can remove the end overlap and interact it because we just need to detect when the player enters the pyramid. And then we have the begin overlap and so when the player uh, begin overlap we don't want to print that kind of code so we want to move the the door so to move an object we need a reference to that object so i'm going to drop the door in the custom properties of the script and now i can get the door here uh, in my script and i'm going to uh, use the move to function so the move to, you have to give a position and then uh, a duration. So for example, one second um, and the position. So right now, the the position of the door is that. So minus 500 to, let, let's use some round number that will be easier. So minus 500, 5,000, 2,500 and if I use 700, no, that's a bit too much. Well, let's use uh, 680. And we want to move the door to that position. So 1013. So if we do 1000 minus 680, we got 320. So 330. So now if the door is at that position and I do plus 330, you see that the door is moving at the right position. And instead of just setting the position of that object, we want to move the object so that it's, uh, it will be uh, fluid. So let's uh, make a new vector. Uh, so we don't want to change the X, the X or the Y. We just want to change the Z to uh, 330. Um, So this is the vector that we want to add, but first I need the current position of the door. So I'm going to do get world position. And I'm going to move that in an offset uh, so that if I want to change that value, then I can just change that uh, here in my, in my script. Uh, I can even do something uh, better. I will do that just right after. Uh, all right, so now here, when the player enters the, the trigger, then uh, if it's a player, then I get the position of the door, the final position, and I move the, the door. So if I try to do that right now, um, right now I have a small error because I forgot to rename that trigger. And we'll have another issue. So if I um, enter in, in that room, 
you see that it's saying that I am attempting to modify um, non-networked objects because right now the door is just like an object placed in the scene and we haven't told the the the, the engine that uh, this object is a networked object so it, it will move in the game so now that it's networked I can try again And you see that now in one second the 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 door is closed. So this is great. Um, maybe we can play a sound. Yeah, maybe we can we can try to to play a sound. So I'm just going to uh, uh, let's first add the door and the trigger in a new group called the door system. And um, yeah, something I wanted to do and that I can show you right here is instead of having that vector here, um, I'm going to make a new custom property in the door system. So let's make a new vector three that's called the offset. And that's the um, offset to close the door. Hold the door. All right, so here I can set the Z to 330. So you see that it's the same value uh, here, so 0, 0, 330. We have the same here. But now that's a custom property of the door system. So what I'm going to do right now is from that script, I'm going to pick that uh, root component. So it's the, like on that system that called the door system, this is uh, the, the root component. And from that root component, Let's copy that. I'm going to uh, set that to... So now I have the object and now I can do get custom property offset. And so this is uh, kind of doing the, the same. Uh, I'm just uh, having... Now I have this vector right here. so. If I want to, to change that value, I can set that to 600. And now when I'm entering the room, you see that it's going way up. Uh, and maybe we can start like that. Oh, and it's doing the, this twice. So now the, <laughs> the door is flying. Uh, so yeah, we haven't had the kind of a condition to stop that. See that there is some message, hey, I read, yeah, I'm reading the, the chat right now. So yeah, for the people watching that on YouTube, this is a, a weekly session we're doing uh, on Tuesday. So yeah, you, you can come and, and interact with, uh, with us. Uh, and I'm from France, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so let's just uh, say that once the door is open, then I don't want the door to be open another time. So we're going to have this state called um, um, like is door opened equal equals false. And so when, when uh, it's open, then I want to set that to true. And I'm just going to... Um, well, we, we have two ways of doing that. I can just say that if the door is open, then I want to return. So I want to do nothing. Uh, so right now, when I will uh, enter in the trigger, then it will just uh, like the door is al already open. So it, it won't make uh, like it won't move the door. Um, maybe something we can also do that's more optimized because right now, uh, we will still uh, look at if the player is entering in the trigger. We can do something else. So we can uh, get the event listener. And the event listener will be equals to that. So right here, uh, I'm kind of saving the fact that this function is connected to that event. Um, and, and now I know that, um, so this is, uh, the yeah the this is the the link between that event and that function. So once the door is opened, I can remove that, and I can just say that you have to disconnect the event listener. 
So if I disconnect that event listener, then my script is not uh, connected to the beginning of our lap event. So like that function will still be here, but this um, will not exist anymore because here I've disconnected the, the, the event. So let's try uh, if this is working. Let's just print uh, event listener disconnected. And here we can print the event listener connect connected. So now it's connected. Uh, so it's looking for a player to, to enter the room. And when I'm entering, you see that uh, now the door is open. But if I come next to the trigger, now it's not uh, detected anymore that uh, someone has entered because uh, the event is not connected anymore. All right, so we are halfway there uh, in this one hour session. Uh, do you have some questions about this first script I, I just made? So here I'm defining the variable. Here I'm assigning the vi variable. Uh, like I'm saying that this value, like what returns the connect, is saved in that value so that I can access it here. If I'm doing something like that, uh, this function won't know that the, the event listener exists because it was defined under. So that's really important to first define that and then um, uh, connecting the event listener. All right, so no more questions. So right here, we that's great. Now we have a component that we can uh, kind of, uh, I can even share that in the community content. If you, if you need something like that, like a door that can open just once, uh, and you can move the position of the door and then change the offset here that you want uh, for your for your door and and yeah that's that's a small system um, all right so once the door is uh, closed I want the the walls to to kind of uh, like move uh, next to the player uh, and yeah maybe this can be the kind of the limit so I want to move all the, the walls. Um, well, I will kind of use the same script. Um, yeah, I think first I'm going to just select those three walls and group them in uh, like this is the door wall. So now you see that I have uh, I have this wall on the front this one on the back and the left and the right wall. And these are the three walls that I want to move. Um, so we can also enable networking. Uh, let's enable networking for all of these objects. And now I'm going to move them. Um, so, um, so to detect when I have to to start uh, moving those walls, I can broadcast an event here. So, once the the door is closed, then I want to wait one second, and then let's print uh, or let's broadcast an event. Uh, door closed. So here I'm just sending an event and whenever I'm, I want to know when the door is closed, I can uh, check if that event is uh, like has happened and has been fired in another script. So let's make um, a new script in the room and this will be the wall controller, walls controller. Um, all right, so maybe I can place that one right here. Oh no, let's just uh, have all those objects in a group called walls. Mm. No, I don't, I don't need that right now. All right, so now I have the, the walls. Um, and in that script, I want to check when the door has been closed. So uh, connect door closed. And then I want to give a function, so on door closed. 
and I'm going to make a new function. And let's just print uh, start moving wall. I'm going to wait one second here. Um, so let's remove that. So here I'm, I'm broadcasting an event and you see that here on that script I'm connected to that event. Uh, so I can now print here door closed waiting one second and then we're going to start moving all the walls. So now the door is closed. Um, I don't know if it worked. Let's let's try again. I, I wasn't really looking at the event log. Door closed, waiting one second, start moving wall. Okay, so I think, yeah, because here the move to is waiting, like it's moving for one second. So I have here to add the task dot wait because the, the the script will be will still like uh, read line by line. So at the beginning of the, like when the door started moving, then I was broadcasting at the beginning. But right now I want to say move the door for one second. And then after one second, close the, like broadcast the door closed. So right now this should be a bit better. So when I'm here, now door closed, waiting one second, and then start moving wall. So right now they're not moving. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to, um, let's call that the north wall, like north. This will be the south. This is the east. And this is the west. So I'm going to, uh, mm, yeah, instead of just like, I could just move the subject here, um, uh, but I'm going to show you another way. So I'm going to just move the room as a custom property of that uh, walls controller. And now from that room, I can say that the north wall equals room and then you have this function called find child by name and then I can give the name of a child of that object. So room if the, is the parent and then north, south, west and east are the, the four children of that object. Uh, and so I'm going to get uh, this wall, so the south, the west and the east, <coughs> west and east. So that that's another way to uh, get some object from the from the hierarchy. Um, and all right, let's uh, call the function like uh, move walls. So in that function, I want to move the walls. So the goal is just to say that uh, uh, you have like, I don't know, the time may be like 30 seconds. Uh, so the timer equals 30. Uh, so they are going to move for 30 seconds. Uh, and we're going to use the same thing as the door right here. So I'm going to... Um, we're going to do that in a not a really great way <laughs> to start but then I can show you how we can make that better so uh, this is the north wall and the offset so right now we have to define the, the offset so let's just see the, say that that's a new vector and then we want to move the north wall not for one second but 30 seconds. Um, maybe you won't really see it for 30 seconds. So I'm going to use the timer here and let's do 10 seconds. 
So um, if the wall is the north wall, I want I need to move the that value, so the the red one, so the x, and I want to move the x from uh, so that value that's six hundred twenty two to uh, yeah I think that that value is great, um, so one hundred seventy four. 174 so if we do 622 minus 174 then we have 450 so let's say that we are going to um, remove so that's minus we want to remove uh, or let's do add but add the minus 450 so now the, the position of the wall is uh, like the goal is to reach uh, 622 minus uh, that value. So let's try that. It's clothing, waiting one second, and now you see that now the, the wall is moving. So the door is not moving with the, with the object. I can change that right now, but let's see if it stopped. Yeah. So after 10 seconds, then it just stopped. So right now the, the door is not moving, so it's not that great. Um, but I'm just going to move the door system in the north wall. And now when I'm moving that, you see that the door is moving with the, with the wall. So that's great. Uh, now we want to make the same here. So for the west, um, all right, let's do something like that. And I'm going to duplicate that for now. Uh, it's really not the, the best way to do that, but then I will show you a better way. So we have the south, west, and east. Um, and now I need those like the other positions. So right now it's minus 800 and I need to reach minus 285. So that's minus uh, like that's a plus 315. And for the west, we are from minus 758 to that, so minus 170. We can do the same, we can do the, the math here, so um, minus that value. Uh, oops, it's like plus. So this is the value that we want to move. So this is for the west wall. We're going to remove minus 588, uh, not to add. So if we do that value plus 588, then it's moving right here. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking that maybe we could also use some dummy object, but yeah, let's do, let's do just something like that right now. Um, all right, and for the east, 900, and we want to get to 300, so that's a minus 600. All right, let's try that right now. So they are all moving. I don't think that, no. It seems that this one is not moving. Oh yeah, because <laughs> I changed the X and not the, the Y. So you see that they are moving on that axis but not uh, in the in the middle of the of the room so i should just change that to the y position nice and now we have everything uh, moving <laughs> on us and uh, and we're gonna just die in that in that room. All right. Um, so you see that here the roof is not moving. So maybe we we could have a 
or maybe just a kind of a ceiling. Uh, like we can play, place a plane, but um, just want to show you more stuff before the end of, of that session. So, all right, so now we have this kind of values, uh, but it's not looking really great. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to save the offsets in, a, in an array. So first in the north, then south. Oh, I can even do that. Let, let's do something uh, better. So I'm going to make some um, constant with uh, so north equals zero, south equals one, uh, east equals two, and west equals three. So it, don't, it doesn't really matter what kind of values we have here, but um, I'm just going to now, instead of um, just setting the offset in, uh, in an order that I might forget if I come back to that project in, in, in two weeks, uh, or even tomorrow, <laughs> I can just do something like that. Um, it starts at one. Um, because the, the array is starting at one. So now I have... Uh, offset with the key one, I want to store the value with that vector. And I'm going to do that with um, all the different directions. So this is south. Here we have the west. And here we have the east. So I'm, I'm just showing you uh, Lua, Lua tips to improve. So you see that here I'm repeating myself a lot. And when you're uh, scripting, scripting or, or yeah, making a system like that, you don't really want to repeat yourself like that. That's not a really uh, great code. You see that every time I'm getting the position plus an offset and then I'm moving that object to, a, to that position. So instead of doing that here four times, I'm going to have a function that's called move wall that will take the wall uh, and the yeah the, the the name of the wall. Yeah, we can just do something like that. Um, and so now. Here, instead of using the north wall, I'm just going to use wall. So now it can work with any wall. And here, instead of using that specific offset, I'm going to check the offset with that specific name. So uh, let's move that here. So now, instead of doing uh, all of that, I can say that you have to move the wall north wall and the name is north so now wall is equals to north wall and here offsets with the name the name here becomes north and offsets north is that value and i can do that with all the walls south west and east and so now you see that the code is a bit cleaner so when we come here you have to move all the walls so waiting one second and then we move the north wall and and we give the the idea of that of that wall uh, and, and now this is uh, this is doing the so I think it's doing the same. Let's just try. So I'm arriving here. The door is closed. Waiting one second, and then you see that everything is moving. So we're doing the same. It's just like a bit uh, better for the like on the Lua aspect, um, and. 
Now, maybe another way also we can improve that code. Uh, it's never, never enough. <laughs> um, we can have here um, walls. And instead of so storing that in different values, I'm going to do the same. So walls north equals find child by name north. Uh, and I'm going to do that for uh, everything. So south, walls, west, and walls, east. Uh, but right now I have to move that at the top because I'm using this. So to use this, I need here the that uh, like those values and here i'm defi defining the offset so now you see that i have all the walls and all the offsets so instead of doing uh, right here I'm, I'm still repeating myself because i calling four times the the same function so now i can do for name wall in pairs walls so here I'm looping through all the walls that are stored here in that table. So this is how you do a loop, <coughs> a loop in Lua. So the name is the key. So one, two, three, or four, north, south, west, or east. And wall is the object because here I assign that object to the key north. And so now that I have that, I can say here that you have to move the wall wall with the name that is called name. And it's doing the same, but it's still uh, a bit cleaner than that, that what we, have, uh, we had at the beginning, because you see that now if you look at the code, when the door is closed, we wait one second and we move all the walls. And that move walls, it's just going through all the objects, the, the walls object, and it's moving each wall uh, one by one. You give the wall um, and the name. Instead of giving the name here, we can even give the offset. Let's call that offset. And instead of just doing, giving the name, we're going to give offset name. So now the move wall, it's taking the wall and the offset. Uh, and we just move that for, for 10 seconds. All right. Um, and I think it's it's doing the, the same. So now the door is closed and then after one second, everything is moving. But you see, you see that the script is uh, way easier to, to read. Um, and, uh, and yeah, now I'm stuck here in that, <laughs> in that uh, between those walls. Um, we still have 10 minutes. I don't think like, I had a lot of things in, in mind, uh, like some levers that can stop that. Um, yeah, maybe we can do that. Let's say that. Um, mm, 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 do we have a lever here? No. Yeah, maybe I can just add uh, a button. Yeah, I'm going to add the button right here. And when you click on it, then it just like stop and, and the door opens again. But the, the player has to find that button. Um, so let's just place a trigger here. And this trigger will be an inter interactable trigger. So that means that it will print press F to do something. And here I... Um, uh, let's call that uh, press button. All right, and let's just add a small uh, cube that will represent the button. Maybe we have uh, no. So let's use cube. All right. I can press V to hide the, the gizmo. Uh, and I'm going to move the, the cube inside the trigger. So now uh, let's place that at 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. All right. So now you see that the um, if I change the, oops. Um, 
right? If I change the size of the trigger, then it will change the size of the cube. Uh, and the cube will be just a base material. Uh, yeah, basic material, red, the famous red button. Um, and uh, yeah, what I'm going to do here is that I'm just going to add a new script so that, uh, let's call that uh, help button. And here I'm going to copy the trigger uh, code, but instead of using the overlap, I'm going to use the uninteracted. Uh, and so when the player interacts with the with the button, I want to broadcast an event. Uh, stop walls. And now in my other script, that's here walls controller. Um, I can also connect to that event. So let's uh, connect to stop walls on stop walls. And when that event event uh, is here, so function on stop walls, I want to stop the, the move to of all these objects. Um, so let's, uh, let's make a function. Uh, stop walls and that function is doing kind of the the same so I'm going to go through all the walls because I don't need the name I will just place an underscore uh, so that it's easier to read here I know that I'm just using the the wall um, and I'm going to use the I think it's the stop let's check in the um, so let's take the stop um, move. Yeah, here. Yeah. We have something called stop move. Um, and so I don't know if it's working with the move too. I know that it's stopping the move continuous, but let's check if it's also stopping the, the movement. So now when I call the stop walls, it will just uh, stop moving uh, all the walls. At least I hope. <laughs> Let, let's try if if that stop uh, move uh, is working. So um, let's also print here sending stop walls just to see if this is working. All right. So now when I reach the other side of the table, you see that now I have that press button. And if I press F, Yes, see that now it, it works and now the the door stopped. So now I'm not stuck in that pyramid. Well, I'm, I'm still stuck because the door is closed. Um, but maybe I can also do something like uh, in the, the door system. I can also connect to that event. Uh, but instead of uh, stopping the walls, uh, I want to open the door. So let's just do something like that. Um, so we're going to get the position minus the offset. And in uh, like two seconds, we want to uh, open the, the door. So this is now on uh, door. Well, the event is still the same. It's on stop walls, but now here we are opening the door. Let's see if this is working. So now the door is closed. The walls start to to move around me. And if I press F, see that the wall stops and then the door is opened. Uh, so we still have some issues right here if the player can see that. It's not, not really great, uh, but maybe you could have uh, like some effects where the the pyramid kind of crushes and like you have to run to a, a safe place and and when you look back, then everything crumbles down so that you you can't see that the the walls are looking like that as this is not really uh, yeah 
it's really great looking for the for the player. All right, well, it's the the end of that session. I, I hope you, you liked it. Do we have some um, questions? Uh, yeah, you. Oh, that's right. We can just add, like, we can just dupli duplicate the walls, and and this should be all right. Well, we we might see here the like if we yeah we will see like double layers of walls like that. So that's not not the best solution. I, I don't yeah. I think we can find more more solutions. So yeah, that, that's the um, the end. So let's uh, look at the the script one last time. Uh, so here we have the door controller that detects when the player enters the trigger and that opens the door. Uh, then I'm disconnecting the trigger so that uh, now it's not opening the door whenever I'm entering the trigger. And I broadcast the door closed. The door closed is received here. Uh, and I'm waiting one second, then I move all the walls. So to do that, we made the function with the, the offsets and the walls right here. Uh, and um, yeah, and if I press the button, so right here, if I press the button, then I broadcast the event stop walls. And this will stop the walls thanks to the stop move function. And it will also open the door thanks to that function. All right. Okay. Well, this is not uh, <laughs> as far as uh, as we we could get. Like uh, at least I, I try to show you a lot of different stuff that that you can make uh, with Lua. Uh, we have this small um, escape room that that's here. Um, so th there is no uh, system of. Uh, with some levers that can open the door, but at least you have all the the different bricks that you can have in a system like that. And and the let's build is is just kind of a way to show you how you can um, bring stuff together in uh, like really fast. In in just one hour, we had this kind of of mechanic for for the game that need a lots of of polish, but at least. Uh, this is this is working, and and the player can start like you can start prototyping with that kind of. Um, of system. So everything will be available in the forum tomorrow with the replay and the and the the, the templates with the like the code and and all you need to use that in your game. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. So for the the people that are here not during the the. Um, like not on, on YouTube, uh, there won't be session uh, next week. Like this is the last of uh, of this year. So um, the, the next Let's Build session will be next year in January, uh, maybe with a, uh, uh, yeah, some small uh, adjustment. Uh, and, um, and yeah, so th thank you everyone for being here and uh, I will see you next time.